right? Absolutely. I will say, like, uh, definitely it's been crazy with uh, the coronavirus, but it's been so many blessings. I feel like entrepreneurs need it this time. It was yes. time to put into perspective what was important. And it was time to like, even when you was grinding, it was like, it's really grind time because so many opportunities actually opened with this downfall with COVID. How do you feel? I mean, I, I agree. I know, you know, I, I do feel for the people um, who have really kind of had a tough time. We all have had a tough time, like kind of adjusting this year, but some more than others, you know what I mean? Some people have yeah. lost loved ones. Rest in peace to um, everybody that lost loved ones during COVID. Absolutely. It's been a crazy year. But, you know, I can find the silver lining in it because a lot of people who got that hustler mentality, like you, you know, me and you, we right. be out here trying to, uh, you know. Okay, I'm like, where the bag at? <laughs> okay. So it's like we kind of, part of it was like a catch-22 because it's like everybody kind of get got to sit down, figure some things out. Mm -hmm. figure out where you want to go what you want to do how you want to implement goals it was a lot of my friends and my my immediates kind of trying to figure that out so i think that's kind of the good thing about what's been going on with 2020 but you know you know i always got the music um right drop, right drop. Pop it. that dropped um what was it a month or so ago mm -hmm. um, that record and then I got a new record, Gimme. That's you know you gotta send me these things, right? <laughs> and so, so that's popping. And you know I got the OnlyFans thing going on. Yes. So, so it's just, I got a lot of things turning. Um, got some auditions coming. So I'm just staying busy. Um, just trying to continue to apply pressure while also staying safe during COVID. So right. it's kind of crazy right now, but the radio thing is good. The music is good. I can't really complain. Just trying to stay above water and positive because it's a right. lot of stuff, a lot to be worried about. Mm -hmm. So stay, stay up, basically. So I guess I want to go like in deep with you because people that don't know you or people that, you know, heard of you that don't know your story, like right now, everything is on the up and up for you, but everything hasn't always been that way. So how did you not lose sight of your goal? Because this is a long road. A lot of people think like they might just be watching this and say, wow, look at all this stuff she's got going on. But they don't realize like this is a 24-7 job. And if there was more hours in the day, it'd be that. So tell them a little bit about your story. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad you asked me that because that's that's such a – a big piece of who I am, my story. Like, people see me smiling, trying to have a good time, and they really have no idea some mm -hmm. of the things I've been through and get to where I'm at. Or some of the challenges that you have, like, being a female in this industry. Like, you right. and me, we talk about it all the time. The time. Like, we be like, girl, can you believe this nigga? That, you right. know? <laughs> like, it's a fact. Because, like, you know, and it, it's like a bittersweet thing because I met you when I moved here, you was leaving. You know what I mean? But we always stayed in contact. Even when you in town, you linked, I linked. We, we get each other in the bag. We get each other in opportunities. And that's like me. I don't really hang with a lot of women because it's always a competition. But with you and Kalada, you know, I always felt like, it was never competition. It was always like, we want to see each other win. And whoever's time it is, we don't mind because we know our time is next. And that's what I really, truly appreciate you. Because in this industry, like you just saying, like working with all these men is no joke. It's no joke because for me, I'm a get in and get out person. After I do my job, I'm out. I'm not partying. I'm not going to happy hours. I don't do any of that because I don't want anybody to have anything misconstrued, but that I came here for business. And it sucks that it has to be that way. But when you do mix like a, a little bit of business and pleasure, it ends up turning into a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Listen, I don't got time to clean up no messes. Um, but no, for real, like on, on a serious note, um, I mean, everything you said was so real, like people don't know the journey. They don't know the story. You like, I've known you for so long. It's like, you saw me when I was really just kind of trying to come up, make something right. shake, was able to do some things back home, but it was like, I hit that glass ceiling mm -hmm. and believe it or not, it's a lot of niggas that was holding opportunities from me for right. valid. You know what I mean? 
Um, it was a lot of people that was gossiping. It's always haters, you know, it's always people that got something to say. Mm -hmm. But today, nobody can take the work I put in. The Absolutely. nights I was not sleeping. You feel Absolutely. me? Okay. Nights, all my money up. You mm -hmm. hear me? Mm -hmm. All my money working a day job. And I'm like, look, hey, I gotta pay my rent. I gotta do the the, the, the but with this extra money, I'm gonna go and do this video mm -hmm. and you know, I'm a higher PR person. And like, it's, it was always serious to me. I took it very, very seriously. And, you know, I was put in a lot of compromising positions where niggas was like, oh, would you, you know, fucking him to get on? Like, I still deal with that today. Right. Like, niggas think I got my opportunity at the station on some fuck shit. Mm -hmm. And on mothers, <laughs> like, they didn't, niggas didn't have a choice but to be like, yo, y'all are like, we was bringing people in there left and right. Mm -hmm. It was just coming. Niggas was flying in to sit with me for 30 minutes and going home. Okay. You feel me? Like, it was just, it really happened organically. And sometimes that's how you know you kind of in line because mm -hmm. a lot of people think that kind of comes from, like, something you don't expect. You think you're going to do one thing and go one way, and then something happens to kind of add to what you're already doing. And this right. really happen like I came to Dallas I wasn't even I don't even think I had moved here yet I'm not sure I think I had just moved here and every everywhere I go I do media I try to do media my team will hit up the local internet radio um whatever to see what's going on we've done this for a long time right. and so we put them up and at first they wasn't even trying to fuck with it they was like he's not from Dallas we only host Dallas artists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so we was getting that a lot. And then they came back and was like, you know what? Come on the show. So I came on the show. I'm running my mouth. You know how I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the end, they was like, yo, let me get your information. We got to connect. We got to connect. So we connected like the next week or so. They called me in for me. It was like, yo, you ever thought about having your own show? It's like, well, I talk a lot. I'm a <laughs> big, you know, um, and then I do the artist thing, and I know how important it is for artists to have a platform. I mean, right. shout out to Mango. Oh, Jazzy always had a dope platform. Um, you know, she's always given us a dope platform. So, yeah, I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm going to make it artist-based. I'm going I'm to make it all about the indie artists. And that's what we Absolutely. did. We are today. And I love that. I love that because, like you're saying, like, even you leaving here and me meeting you, like, that was never – that probably was down the line, but I know when you went to Dallas, it was strictly on some music shit. So for the fact that you didn't even see how God was working, that even though he put you in for the show, it was still bringing your music all together. And that's how God works because so many times I've been wanting to get out of this avenue, but God always brings it back. Like even, even with this hosting, you know, I got into acting. Acting was honestly to help a friend out. Mm -hmm. and it, it blew up and because of it how it blew up it just made my hosting even better and put me into different connections with different people and different links that I could have probably never did just hosting so you never know the reason God put people in your life so that opportunity for you look at where it got you now you haven't even been there that long and you you own an estate like that's insane <laughs> I'm so proud of you Thank you, Bo. Thank you. It's a lot of hard work, um, but I, I feel so grateful. I feel like I'm prepared for this because I've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about a lot. So, you know, I just feel like um, it, it's a different lane, but it still ties into everything that I'm doing. I kind of feel like the girl version of Luda. A lot yeah, of yes. The radio thing and kind of put himself on. So, I mean, it's a beautiful experience. I get to meet artists from all over. Like, I get to kind of feel the feel what the south sound is and then feel what the east coast Absolutely. sound is, the west coast sound right. and you know the hyphy movement versus this and that it's just like you know it's a beautiful thing so i really have kind of enjoyed the experience it comes with some challenges though Absolutely. Um, you know, always some haters you know yeah. i've been having a contact at a lot of people lately i I've know been i know how it is i know how it I is <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you know it's funny because you know a girl had reached out to me and she was just real discouraged. And she was saying how she just started her nail business. And 
friends and family weren't supporting her and she finally just sees what everybody's always talking about. And I said, you know, don't let that discourage you because friends and family, unfortunately, might not support you. I don't really even know what it is, but I know that I go through it. I know that I even go through people that claim they my friends or my associates or as uh, Tip would say, constituents. And these people don't fuck with me for real. Like these people don't fuck with me. They might fuck with me because they, they want to see where they could go or where I could put them in and where elevation I'm going to go so they can come up with me. But on some real shit, these people don't fuck with me. They don't like my shit. They don't share my shit. They don't be at my events. And when I was first starting off, this used to bother me. But as I matured and grew up and been in this game, I just realized it's okay. Because all the other people that do support you, that's all that matters. You don't need, you know, I know it hurts. You want to talk to your friends. You want your friends rocking your clothes or getting their nails done or getting their hair done, listening to your music. But if that doesn't happen, it's okay. But I'm going to tell you one thing. When I make it, don't be wearing my shit. <laughs> hey. Oh, yo, let me get in with you. Let okay. me say, uh, we'll, okay. We'll, we don't even we'll, know each other. We don't know because you can't. Because when you when you a hustler and you do shit for free and people yeah. don't support you, nah. Yeah, no. Cause that's when that's when you gotta put up hit them with the price tag. Bow. You know what I mean? Like absolutely. Cause they they will they will they if you allow them, especially being a woman. Mm hmm. But allow them, they will run you up your yes. talents. Cause, cause what I love, you know, and this isn't a, this isn't about like all situations and all Absolutely. people. Absolutely. <laughs> Always exceptions, you know. So this is not to be clear, cause you know people like to take right and put, and, twist up your like, words and uh, she um, bashing all her family. Girl. <laughs> so I to be clear. But you know, there's always kind of that that group of people that you got to be careful because this is an industry where you eat or be eaten. Yes. Period. Like that's the Absolutely. best way I can. Yeah. So you got, especially being a woman, like you know, when you talented like you, you got the podcast going, you doing love hurts and you acting and this and that. You know, people will kind of see the talent and want to take advantage of that, but mm -hmm. they also not make sure you're good and right. you're comfortable. Your talent and a lot of times when women step up and when we say hey this is what it is it's like maybe like looking like what you mean i'll be like right. what you mean what? business right, right. so they right. don't like business and then everybody but some people Absolutely. you know, gotta kind of apply that pressure and really let them know like this is what it is absolutely um i forgot who i was watching but it was a documentary on uh, the lady that um, does all the styling in the industry, you know, she does little Kim style. And I know you know who she is because she's so big in the industry. But she was basically said they want to fuck you and then fuck you over. And mm -hmm. that's how I've been feeling for a little bit of minute because um, I had to transition and do some opposite things because what I was doing, it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. So I said, you know what? If I lose friends, if I lose industry people, it'll be okay because at the end of the day, I know God has a purpose. And you mentioned earlier about investing in yourself. I, I want you to explain how important that is because the fact that you did invest in yourself, you're able to call shots where you don't even have to put yourself in positions where a man can feel like he's trying to own you or control you or take advantage. That has been probably one of my biggest strengths through my yeah. journey. And yeah. um, all women, if you really are passionate about something, you really, really want to do it, it's your vision. God gave it to you. If you see it and it came to you, that vision belongs to you. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting how people be like trying to manipulate or get it or, you know, change somebody's course. So for me, I'm always open to ideas. Like I love good ideas. I'm an open person. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. know that about me, but when it comes to my journey, I was like, yo, I, I got to do this. I'm passionate about this. This is what I love. I can't see myself doing nothing else. So by all means necessary, I have to make this happen. And then it's also like the, the family I grew up in, like my birth order, all my siblings are younger than me. They watching me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My family watching me. So mm -hmm. it's like, 
I got to show and prove. And when I came out here to Texas, I left all my family back home. Like it's generations and generations and generations of my family on the East Coast. So, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it was like I, I took a risk first. But with that, I've always also put my own money up to invest. That way nobody could hold it above me. Mm-hmm. Nobody can use that to kind of, you know, take take advantage here or there. It was like, if anything, I'm going to try to put my own money up. Now, once I was able to kind of get some stuff done, I could use that as leverage and do more like partnerships with people right. versus people really being in control. It's kind of like a 360 deal. Artists talk a lot about a 360 deal where you sign to the label and literally everything you make on a 360 deal goes to the label first. Before you see it, they're going to recoup first session time. You don't even know, like hair, wardrobe, car, all this stuff you're not even thinking of. Ubers, all of this, hotels, all of these things, restaurants. A lot of people don't notice. Photo shoots, you know. All of that. So it's like, and also shout out to Adventures Music. I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, They first introduced me to the thought of, what it meant to be an independent artist and how you could monetize yourself as an independent artist, how you yourself are a brand. And right. so I kind of came up under, shout out to Chris Gotti, Dex Adventures Music, Murder Inc., um, Herb Gotti, shout out to everybody. Um, you know, kind of watching them move independently, really, um, you know, that's where I learned a lot yeah. of that from so shout out to them i can never take that from them it's like i have to monetize what you're doing the new wave is independent nipsey hustle was another great example of yeah. independent artists who's rest in peace to nip whose indie hustle was crazy he was selling mixtapes for a thousand dollars a mixtape okay master p all of these people you know what i mean there's he, he has, you, know, you know what i'm saying like all of these people I strive for, I just been that type of person. Number one, I knew it was just destined for me to just do my own thing. Because for me, working for someone used to annoy the fuck out of me. And it was it just would ignore, like, I don't want to be told when to get up. I don't want to be told when my breaks are. And honestly, it was, you know, when you start to try to make things move and shake when your nine to five is in the way. When you at your nine to five and it's and it's in the way of you doing your entrepreneurial things, you know it's time to it's God's trying to push you. It's scary. Like for me, I was so scared. I'm like, how am I pay the rent? I'm down here in the DMV area. I don't have no family down here, you know. And I said, you know, fuck it. I'm just gonna yes. leave. Because I'm sure, right? Yeah. So it was like yes. it's so it was so many opportunities as I was doing my nine to five. I'm getting calls. Can you be here? A photo shoot there. This is the amount. I'm like, shit, I don't make that here. I gotta go. And you know I DJ as well. I had to stop DJing because um I love DJing, but it made me uncomfortable because I'm DJing late at night and I don't and I, I'm it's just me, a female, and it, I didn't like the club scene. I like more of events, parties, you know, um galas or graduations, things like that for um DJing but DJing to make that when you start making that type of money you you know like it's something else out here for you I don't tell you to quit your nine to five don't get it twisted y'all because if you can't fund what you want to do for a lifetime you need to keep your nine to five and use that money and fund and I'm telling you if you are diligent if you are consistent and if you are determined these things will work out for yourself. And it might not work out how you want it, but it will work out in a way that you'll still be able to do it. What, how do you feel about that? I agree completely. Um, and just to add to that, man, being a student of the game, being humble enough. Like I talk, trust me, I talk my shit. Like, you know, <laughs> I talk that big talk when I get on record. It's, your, it's in but your nature. I got to. I got to. But yeah. when it comes down to it, I really kind of tap, man. When it, I don't think I know everything, period. Right. Ever. I don't ever right. think I know everything. Always teachable. Things change. Everything changes. So the quick, industry too. was different two years ago than it is today. Everything kind of changes. So it's like you kind of got to keep up with it. So always be open to learning and having your OGs that you trust in your corner that's kind of telling you, it's okay to pick up the phone and get advice from somebody you trust. Cause mm-hmm. you know, this industry, like your network is everything. everything. Your network. And your name and your word. 
Yeah. Team Omega is everything. It's 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 all about the relationships you you have. You can't get on unless you have the relationships because you have to have that reputation to be somebody that people can work with, that people can trust. And there's a lot that goes into it. So really being a student, having them OGs, always learn it. Go on YouTube. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Watch all these mm -hmm. YouTube. Let me tell you, I used to watch The Breakfast Club, Vlad TV, uh, uh, um, Shade 4 5, what's um, Sway in the Morning? Yes, I used yes. to watch all of those interviews just getting game from artists, producers. They have all kinds of people on there. Watch Absolutely. them interviews. Absolutely. Them people free game. Like when I used to work my nine to five, you know, you, they used to let you get the hair for you. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to the interviews. I want to know mm -hmm. what's going on, how people are moving. So for me, it's just always that. Like that's a big, big thing for me. Like never being too big to not be humble enough to learn what's going on out here and keep your ear to the streets. Absolutely. Um, also, guys, if you check out the new interview they have with Yandy Smith on um, OWN, it is great for every entrepreneur or just every person just trying to do something else for themselves. You definitely got to watch that interview because she talks about how she first started from working out and um, working at the Gap to now being where she is right now. And, you know, some people got their um, their feelings about Yandy. I personally like her. And, um, but I think if you watch this interview, you'll respect her even more and you'll understand where she's coming from. It was an amazing interview. And I think it gives inspiration to people that when you're in this, this is the fun part. This is great. Interviews, great. Looking cute, great. But it is depressing at times. And she talks yeah. about how some days she couldn't even physically get up. She couldn't even physically smile. She couldn't even be there for her children because so much goes on with this situation. You lose friends, you lose connections. You know, sometimes you can even lose yourself, you know? People um, don't, you know, you be trying to get people to understand. They be like, girl, she crazy. What's she doing? You know? It, it, it's 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 an interesting journey. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, shout out to Yandy. I, I think Yandy is dope. She out here doing that work. Yeah, you know? she's not playing. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's crazy. But it's a, it's a silver lining in it. You know, for me, um, I'm trying to mature a little bit with it because you know I've been trying to do the music thing for a, a couple years now. So now I'm just you know what? It's pressure season. I right. know better. I'm gonna do better. And and that's where I am today. So you know, you, and you you know I've been watching you do your thing. Listen, you. I've been watching you everywhere. The series has been popping. Shout out Thank to y'all. I don't know if you saw me, but I made my little debut. Yes, okay, on... okay. okay. You made it happen. Two different states and still doing it. <laughs> yes. Everything's going great. Um, I just filmed a movie, Holiday Heartbreak. Um, it, it's going to be on Netflix and BET. Um, I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes because, honestly, you know, behind the scenes is my real passion. I like to be in front of the camera, but I'm trying to get that bag that's always here. <laughs> and everybody's always going to need people behind the scenes no matter what you do and also being a jack of all trades knowing everything knowing how to edit no i'm talking for my people that are in the industry visually knowing how to edit knowing how to write your own things knowing how to produce knowing how to get in front of the camera knowing how what what goes with what and what makes what work what wires can replace another wire these things sound minuscule but when you had a whole premiere and things shut down and they asking you hey do you know what wire will work with this that's what you want to be. You want to be always needed, always yes. needed. Somebody always can depend on you for multiple things. That's how you know you're valuable. Go to hit that with some free game. I'll okay. Get no okay. Okay. Free. Yandy said after two conversations, compensation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. And with this COVID stuff, everybody is learning how to set up at home. All yeah. our favorite shows that we that we love they have all transitioned and people was at home with their own setup with their okay. own ring light their own microphone so it's kind of becoming a thing where it's like this is where it's moving y'all gotta learn how to set y'all little lights up 
And do your thing. Make it shape. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because for me, you know, it ain't, it's nothing that can replace like the actual when people are actual at your studio. But like, mm. this is amazing because people like you that live in Texas or people that might be ill or just not feeling safe because of COVID, we can do it this way. So right now I just been moving and shaking. I've been getting them in, filming, and I've been doing these too. And I've been going to, uh, I'm I'm gonna shout out to uh, my girl Giovanni. Um, I'm gonna be doing a segment on her show every Saturday. And um, two or one Saturday out the week, I'm going to actually physically be there. The rest will be taped. So, you know, I'm just trying to make my way around everything and um, make everything come full circle. You know what I mean? Doing it, though. I've been, I've been watching you since you're doing it. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You too. I'm, I'm proud, proud of you too. Man, you've been, but you've been so consistent. Like, literally, before I was doing the interviews, you were doing them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You've been, and let me tell y'all real quick. You know, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know how Jazzy is, is rolling out here. Oh. <laughs> I first did her show, she sent me the address. And this is some place I ain't even ever been to. I can't even pronounce it. I don't know. You Ask know, your I, key. I, I, tongue is so lazy. What, what is it called? Ask your key. Girl, I ain't know it either. <laughs> no. Okay, listen, don't fall. All right. <laughs> okay, all right. We gonna go do this podcast. We gonna have a good time. You know, she's a cool girl. La la la. So I pull up, y'all. The house is on swole. Like you come through the gates, had the pillars. I'm like, yo, they really throwing it up out here. So shout out to Tango, <laughs> cause off the rip, they was doing it big, like grandiose the way you supposed to do it. So I got a shout out. Shot. Been so consistent over the years, and you always showed me and my brand love. So you know. Gotta show that love right back. You know how. Oh man, I appreciate that. Makes me feel good. Shout out to Toyani Studios for that. Like, um, and you know, just shout out to everybody that's just been there. This is a, a long road, like we said, but it just feels good now to like know that you just keep striving, you just keep grinding, and every time you be like, "Wow, that was an elevation." When you look back, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, one more thing I wanted to touch on before you you leave. How do you maintain your sexuality in the game because you are very sexual but it's done so classy how do you stay true to yourself in that because i feel like this is something important for women to just listen to you about um really for me it it's kind of like a fine line you know that i find myself kind of falling back and forth with honestly but it's all about um for me empowerment um, loving myself the way that I am, um, flaws and all, because you know how okay. girls are. We, Kira, we pick Girl. ourselves. Up. We do Everything. the most. It's kind of a girl thing. We all kind of struggle with that. But for me, it's just kind of owning myself because the truth is, it's funny because people say, um, you know, women that should be respected that only dress or look a certain way, right? Even right. in today's society, that's a thing. Right. Like with the whole in the stallion situation, yeah. all this mess people are right. saying, um, they kind of seem like, oh, you have to carry your, yourself a certain way to be respected. Let me tell you, I don't know how, how long a lot of y'all been following me, but when I first started rapping, I was like the boom back chick that thought she had to bar everybody. I was like baby Rhapsody. I thought mm -hmm. I had to come in like I was ready um, you know, to, to freestyle, you know, slaughterhouse. I felt like to be respected and to be um, respected in this game, that's what I had to do. But right, I did all right. that, barred niggas to death, won ciphers, did all of that, all mm -hmm. of that. And it still didn't give me the respect as a woman. It's still about how I look and my ass and this and that. And that's okay. Right. Listen, because I like to be sexy. I like to wear beautiful things and, you know, kind of just do my thing. So it's cool. But it's a it's a misconception about that. You look and do it a certain way, it's, it's a certain level of respect. Niggas treat right. you the same with some this Tim's on. And, and a sweatshirt. And be fucking the bitches that got I'm the shit they don't want you to wear. Where's the lie? Like, that's my problem. Like, where's don't the tell me, me as me as your girl, don't tell me what to put on. But yes. you liking all these whole Instagram chicks. That don't work for me. Yes. If you don't want me to wear something, I'm going to decide whether I'm rocking with that or not. But 
If yes. you don't want me to wear something, I'm going to need you to act like that's all around the board. Yes, don't, exactly. Don't tell me, well, they're not my girl. Well, then you shouldn't be liking them, period, then. Well, exactly. it's just social media. No, it's not. See, that's mm -hmm. what I think people got confused. It's 2020. It's no longer 2010 when social media was just getting popping and this was a facade and da, da, da. People live off social media. We are on social media right now. This is real. So yes. when you like ho-ass shit, you like ho-ass shit. So if yes. I'm your girl and I want to do some ho-ass shit with my man, there shouldn't be no problem. And whatever I have on shouldn't be an issue because when you met me, I had that on. So don't switch it now that I'm your girl. You ain't meet me in no sweatpants, boo, because I don't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear them. <laughs> so I'm going to need you to be secure in yourself because one thing and one thing only, I respect me Yes. before I respect you. So and whatever I got on is not mm -hmm. defining me. I know how to carry myself. Yes. And that's and, that, and I feel the same way with you because every time I look up, like, oh, that booty looks good. Like, she looks so good. She looks so like the lotion. Thank down. You. Okay, but ain't nobody touching your booty. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, you already know the vibe. Girl, okay. my booty is going away a little bit. Not a, no, it ain't going away. Natural, y'all. It's natural. Okay, <laughs> gonna be here killing it. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> but no, seriously, definitely on it. No, it's all about uh, self love for me, comfortability, feeling beautiful as a black woman. Mm -hmm. Black women are the, are the most disrespected, the most undesired. So, you know, for us, sometimes just owning it and being powerful in it is, is just, it's just a strength. Uh, and, you know, I say if you got to flaunt. I and, say you know, too. You know, I, I give her a lot of credit. I think, um, you know, she she's kind of just paved that that path for thick girls Absolutely. or girls with sizes. And shout out to Rihanna, man. The whole yes, thing, yes, whole thing and just seat. showing everyone's flaws and all uh, and just beautiful. Like I feel from from her skincare line to her makeup line down to her lingerie and and fashion and shoe line, her shoes all sizes for everybody, and as well as all shades for you know makeup skincare for different type of textures of skin and lingerie for all type of women all type of bodies if you got big boobs small waist big butt if you got big boobs small waist small butt she gonna do it for you any combination you need she gonna do it and for I you and, it. and i love it and the fabric is amazing and you know we just gotta i love rihanna like her grind is sick her grind is sick. I don't think she's making no more music. And I'm all right with that because I can see that she's just on a different path. I see yeah. she likes her th uh, philanthropy and she likes just helping on another level. And I think her fashion, we have always been in love with her fashion. Yes. Shout out to Riri. I love it. I love it. But, you know, as women, we, we go through so much. We we put ourselves out there every day to be yeah. scrutinized. Look at that. Look at this. Her hair. da 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 we put ourselves out there, so it's 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 definitely a lot of self love going on. I know I know yeah. that's how we do it. So no, absolutely, absolutely. And I want to touch on you know like I want to touch on just like black women and black men. Like I really just want us to get back to how it was. Like I really don't want us to keep disrespecting each other and women. We, there ain't no good men and men. There ain't no good women because. I just want to let y'all know that the foundation starts with us. And when we're not loving on our men and our men loving on us, it affects our children and it trickles down. There's so many single mothers, so many single fathers, so many kids that don't have either or. And this is a serious problem. I just look at my son or I look at other people's children and I look at how the divide of the household has really affected things. And so I really need us to get on one accord with that. I need the love to come back. I need our black men to be strong. I need our black women to be strong and also have some submission in that. And us black women, don't get it twisted. We have no problem submitting. We just not submitting to anybody. If no, you want to lead me, lead me right. Lead me right. I want to be led. You got <laughs> I want to be led. Listen, we can't, if we watch you fuck your life up every day, Okay, what makes you think we want that advice? That's just what, the number you, question. Okay, seriously, that's the million dollar question. We be watching y'all go ahead and fuck up and be like, babe, what should I do? 
be coming home like, what should I do? <laughs> like, see, if you took my advice, she'd have been good. But I yes. agree with you, the um, one thousand percent that at the end of the day, we need that unity. I think as a race of people, yeah, we don't get that part right outside of relationships, friendships on every level. Black people don't get it right. Asian people, they be buying stores together, you know, investing in properties together. You know, people, Middle Eastern people, people from all over be all kind over. of what, helping, helping with the kids, watching the kids. Helping Black the people, kids. they be like, oh, what? Well, so that's going to be $100 or well, right. I'm gonna this. It's like, it's always a transaction. Yeah. It's always a, a tip for tat. And it's like, yeah. you don't understand what that person could be going through. You don't yes. understand that they just might need you, you know? And we got to be open to hearing each other. I think that's I the biggest that. issue with social media and everything. Nobody is hearing the other person. No. Now, some people be saying some trash stuff. You be like, bro, <laughs> you really got to control. What like, you so talking about? <laughs> control. I ain't even going to catch. But some people, you know, I think it's always important to be open to ideas. Like, we all have different upbringings and perspectives. Like, I always <laughs> say... I was born a white woman uh i would know what that's like but i am mm -hmm. not so i can right. never say what it's like Absolutely. to be that young lady and vice versa like she wasn't born in my shoes or born to a 15 year old mother at saint agnes hospital in baltimore maryland so if you don't have the same story rightfully so you're not gonna see through the same eyes as that person Absolutely. but if you give a fuck then it's your job to kind of sit down and be like all right well how you feeling? Let's talk about it. Right. If you care about that person or if you care about that situation, if you don't care, then it is what it is. But, you know. So, definitely. Yeah. Listen, I appreciate you so much for coming on this show. Let everybody know where they can follow you at, where they can get your music, purchase your music, and anything you got coming up in the future. And also, I noticed there are multiple things, how mm -hmm. artists can um, get on your show. Okay, um, no doubt. I think I got it. All right, so listen, y'all make sure to follow me everywhere at Nephew Raps. That's N E F F Y Raps um, with an S. Um, I just dropped my Bay record that's available on all platforms. All you got to do is type in Nephew Raps Bay. Um, I also have a new record, Gimme, that's going to be coming out. Um, it's a little spicy, so I ain't even going to tell y'all about it till it dropped. That's going to be coming out later this month, so make sure y'all check for that. Also, y'all know I host a Vibe Session. It comes on every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, it's on power2.com. It's also on iHeartRadio. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere you want to listen. Um, also, on top of that, um, what else is going on? I got the Misbehave show that's exclusively on my OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're, we're fun games. We answer fun questions. Um, I, I've got to get you on that show. I think you might like uh, yeah, that. Yeah, you know what? You know, you you changing my stigma about OnlyFans a little bit. I like that. That's cute. And it's, it is a big stigma with OnlyFans. Um, it really is. But once I kind of got on there and saw, it's all kinds of people on there. It's people on there doing fitness videos. It's people on there doing yoga tu tutorials. It really is a, if you want to use it, it's a fan-based platform. So for mine personally, you'll get a little bit more racier pictures and videos than you'll see on my Instagram. But in addition to that, it's fun stuff going on. The Misbehave mm -hmm. show going on. Y'all might catch me doing random funny stuff in my little negligee over there. So, you know, it's just a vibe. It's not it's as big, big as people make it. It really depends on the person. So, right. um, you know, that's going on if y'all want to check that out. Um, gosh, the Bay Music video is coming out soon as well. Shout out to Ghost. Um, yeah. Shout out to Lion. Shout out to Poncho. Everybody involved in the video. Um... Man, I feel like that's it. We're going to be resuming our Winter Drip Fest concert series very soon. We started that beginning of 2020. It feels like forever ago. I know, but, but then so fast because, I mean, shoot, it's, it's December. Girl, we had to shut down because <laughs> of COVID, but we will be resuming that, getting artists on for that show. And if you want to get on the Vibe Session, all you got to do is hit me up in my DM at Nephew Raps. You can also hit up my partner in crime, Lionhearted underscore 9.0, 
Or Shout you can hit us up you, with boo. the What's up, Lion? Or you can hit me on the